Hello everybody, welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be going through special products and products means we're multiplying. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by just reviewing some old multiplication problems like exactly what you just did in the warm-up and then the main part of the lesson is I'm going to show you a different way, a faster way, as long as you remember the certain pattern of multiplying polynomials. Here's something that's different and wasn't in your warm-up, but let me just make sure that you can do this. Um, I think we did it a while back, but maybe I'm remembering a different year. It wants the area of the figure. The area, the figure, the figure is a rectangle, so the area comes from the length times the width. Let's make this one the width, and 2a minus 3 the length. Using substitution, that's 2a minus 3 for the length, and then instead of putting w, we're going to put 3a squared plus 1. Then we'll distribute the first guy to the first guy to make 6a cubed, 2a times 1 to make 2a, minus 9a squared, minus 3. Then we just have to write them in order from the greatest power to the lowest power. So that means the final answer for a is 6a cubed minus 9a squared plus 2a minus 3. This is an area of a parallelogram. This bottom line is parallel to the top line, and this left side is parallel to the right side, so this is a parallelogram. The rectangle is also a parallelogram, it just has right angles. Here this is a parallelogram, and parallelograms have angles that are not right angles, but if you do drop a line down, you can make a right angle. Okay. So since this is a parallelogram, and since parallelograms are like rectangles, the formula for the area of a parallelogram is actually the same as the area of a rectangle. So let's do the same thing. We're going to multiply the width by the length. But you can consider this the height also if you wanted to. Some formulas have it base times height for parallelograms. That means we have 6k plus 5 times 8k squared minus k minus 1. We'll distribute the first one to the first one. 6k needs to multiply the next one over, which is a minus k. So it's only going to increase the power and change it to a negative. And then we have 6k times negative 1 to make a negative 6k. Then we're going to do the 5 times the 8k squared, making a plus 40k squared. 5 times the negative k to just be minus 5k. And then 5 times negative 1 is a minus 1. Our final answer is going to have the 48k cubed. These are going to make the 34k squared. Combine these two negative k's to make negative 11k, and then minus 1. Oh, the reason why it didn't match is because it shouldn't be a minus 1. When that 5 multiplies that 1, it's a minus 5. My mistake. Okay, here's the teak, which is the standard, is that you need to be able to multiply polynomials. I've already shown you how to multiply polynomials. But the benefit of today is that you're going to learn about a certain pattern called a sum of squares and the difference of squares. And you're going to have to find the product of those things. So go ahead and start off by writing down the definition of the square of a sum. The square of a plus b is the square of a plus twice the product of a and b plus the square of b. 
How I recommend writing this is you're going to write the square of a plus b is the square of a comma plus twice the product of a and b comma plus the square of b. Make sure you write down those that definition and then also write down the example and the symbols that they gave you. Label it as the symbol and the examples when you write it down in your notebook. So what those words are saying is that whenever you have two things inside of a parenthesis, two random numbers, one of the numbers is A, one of the numbers is B, no matter what those numbers are, the answer to whenever you square them, the answer for those two things squared is always going to be whatever the first number was squared plus the two things multiplying together and then you do twice that and then the last number is always whatever the second number was in that parentheses it's going to be that thing squared and then there's the example they give you x is in the place of a so in our answer we have x squared 4 is in the place of b so in the end of our answer we're going to have 4 squared and then x and 4 are a and b so they're going to end up together this would have been a 4x but in the formula it says do twice 4 times x so this is 2 times 4 times x to make 8x. It's okay if it didn't make a ton of sense right now because we're going to do some examples in just a second. Okay, let's do this first one. They wrote it down below, but you don't need to look at it all at once. We're just going to write 7z plus 2 squared equals before we write what it's equal to, let's write down the formula, just like they did. a plus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's the pattern. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take whatever's in first, whatever's in the place of a, which is 7z, and we're going to square it. So 7z squared plus 2 times a times b. 2 times a times b. So that's 7z times 2. And then we're finally going to add whatever is in the place of b and we're just going to square it so that's 2 squared which is 4 now let's simplify this power distributes to both making 49 z squared plus 2 times 2 times 7 will make 28 z plus 4 Now maybe this first time it didn't seem like that saved you time, but eventually, once you get a lot of practice, it will save you time because you'll be able to multiply and square that binomial in your head. Let's do another extra example real quick. 4 plus x squared. If we're going to follow the same pattern, then what we're going to do is we're going to take the first number and square it, plus two times the first number times the second number two times 4x plus the second number squared and then we just simplify 16 plus 8x plus x squared and finally you write it from the highest power first to the lowest power last Okay, let's go to the next slide. 
3x plus 2 squared. We can see that we have two things adding together. You have to make sure that they're adding together because that pattern that we're doing right now, the pattern that we're focusing on today, is the square of a sum. If you have two things adding together inside of a parenthesis, and the squared is on the outside of that parenthesis, then you are allowed to do 3x squared plus 2 times 3x times 2 plus 2 squared, which is 4. This power distributes to both of those terms, both of those pieces, to make 9x squared plus 2 times 2 makes 4 times 3 makes 12x plus 4. We went through that one a little bit faster, but that's just because I've already written down this formula a ton of times. So what you should do is every time you're about to use this formula, write the property down. Write this down and then do it on the problem. If you write it down, you're less likely to make a mistake on where you put something. So let's do one last example in these notes for the square of a sum. 18x plus b squared. The formula says whenever you have two things adding and they're being squared, you're going to square the first number, do twice of the two things multiplying together, and then square the second number. So 18 squared is 324. And then x squared is x squared, plus 2 times 18, x times b, plus the second number squared. Now all we have to do is copy that same thing down, but do 2 times 18 to make 36, x b, plus b squared. And that didn't take any long multiplication because we just recognize the pattern of two things adding inside of a parenthesis being squared on the outside.